Welcome to the Bill Cartwright Show with Steve Cohen. Our special guest today is Mr. Uh, Mike Quick. Mike, welcome to the show. Thanks, Bill. Glad to be here. Looking forward to spending some time with you guys. Yeah, and you know, it's always interesting when you talk about uh, people you know, but you're not really positively sure how they uh, got to USF. So I'm really curious. Uh, can you tell me about your people who influenced you growing up and um, how you got introduced to basketball? You know, I started playing when I was in eighth grade and I was really a baseball player. I played baseball, football, but basketball was the last thing that I decided to do. And a friend of mine named Robert Lewis was playing basketball and he lived in the neighborhood and his brother played and some of the other guys played in the neighborhood. So we all got together and started playing at Madison Junior High School is where I went to junior high school. And I fell in love with basketball. I love the competitive part, the, the, the interaction with each other, working together as a teammate. And also I love to play defense. So I was like, I'll score, but you can't wow. score. So I love that having that attitude. And uh, that's what we did. We played hard, we played every day, we worked out together. We enjoyed playing the game. So I love playing the game. And from that point on, it was, it was all about trying to be the best that I can be. That was the goal for me to be the best. So when you were in high school, uh, and obviously you, you were successful, um, who, who was your coach then? And who were really some of the guys that you played against that really helped you to, to be a better player? Well, Dave Sugarmossy was the coach who was an excellent coach. Excellent coach. Uh, he was very intelligent. He played at San Francisco State. He was a guard. So that really helped me because, you know, being a guard and coaching and working with a guard was special because he taught me a lot of things, mental, physical, uh, being a leader, just giving me that opportunity to do that at a high school level. But the guys that I really appreciated was the guys that came from my neighborhood because those were the guys that helped me develop because we pushed each other. And what was really good about it is that same group of guys went to Castlemont to coach, to be, work with Dave Shigematsu. So we're all on the same team together. Can you imagine that coming from the oh. neighborhood, all of us <laughs> together, and we, we're competitive and you know, we want to win. So I knew that we were going to win. There was no doubt in my mind because we had that attitude, that fire, that motivation to get it done. So together, we, we just wanted it. We said we wanted to be champions before I graduated from Castlemont because they had never had an opportunity to win a, ch a championship. So that was the goal. And my senior year, we knew that was our last year. And we said, you know, we got to get it done. And we got it done. So it's that mental piece. It's that mental, mental toughness, mental focus, want it more than everyone else. That's what it's all about. So can you tell me, how did you get to USF? Who recruited you? Bob Gaylor recruited me. And I really like Bob. Bob was the guard from USF, All-American. You know, he was a star. And he had that fire and motivation that I wanted to see in a coach that you want to win as much as I want to win. And that's what I realized with Bob. And we had, we had great conversations. He even challenged me once. Well, we challenged each other a few times to play him one-on-one. -on -one. That's how I fell in love with Bob, you know, because I felt like, okay, he's a coach and he can play and we can play against each other and talk trash. It was fun. <laughs> it, was a, it was a great opportunity to go to USF. But what was, what was really special was at the banquet, I had a chance to meet a speaker named Beryl Toller. Yes. From USF was our guest speaker. And he came in and he talked about how important academics is in your, should be in your life. Basketball is great, but he played football. He had tore up his knee and he was talking to us about make sure you get your education. Well, my mom talked about that as well. So that, that kind of pulled me in. The other thing that pulled me in was the history of basketball. Uh, Bill Russell, Casey Jones. Then we had guys that were from my area, which is Oakland, Bill Russell, uh, Joe Ellis, 
coming out of West Oakland. They played for USF. So it was like, wait a minute, that's like family, right? Yeah. Oakland, we're family. All of us, we play together. We work out together. So that was my final decision was to go to USF. And it was an awesome experience to play at USF. Just unbelievable. Can you give me your first impressions about your teammates once you showed up on campus? What, well, let me share this with you, Bill. Most of the guys that came, that I had a chance to see, played in a tournament of champions. I played against them in the tournament of champions. So these guys were, were competitors and winners. So when we came, when we, when we showed up on campus, it was like, I knew all these guys. <laughs> I had guys from, from the climates who I played against in Oakland. Uh, we had a couple of guys on that team come. I mean, it was, it, was a, it was like a family. It was San Francisco, Oakland. A lot of the kids were from the area, you know? And so it was a very easy transition for me because I knew all the guys. Can you talk about your first group of guys that you came in with? Um... And, and, and talk about it because I was never fortunate to be able to play with a young Byron Snake Jones or a young Phil Smith or a young Ron Sitterwall. Uh, so talk about those guys at that time. These guys, well, it's, these guys wanted to win. They were very competitive. You know, Phil Smith was a walk-on. Phil used to come up when I was a freshman and want to hang out and play with us and and we told him, you know, you don't have a scholarship. You can't play up here. You can't be with us. What is this about? You know, and we made, you know, we joked with him, but because he was a young kid, he was from the city, we let him play. And he went on to just take that opportunity. And you know, the rest uh, had a great career at USF, drafted by the Warriors, won a championship with the Warriors in 1975. Uh, great. We, we were great working together in the backcourt. It was, uh, we were a heck of a backcourt. And, you know, you had great guys like Ron Centerwall. Snake Jones came from Selma, Alabama. He was a JC transfer. Really nice guy. You know, Snake. Snake, just a fun guy. A great guy to be around. And he could play. Snake had all the skills. Uh, he got drafted by the Boston Celtics. So, yeah, and you, and you there play with, a lot. Of, uh, and you play with Kevin Rustani. Kevin Rustani. I played with Eric Fernstein from Oakland. I mean, from Skyline, from Oakland, another local kid. Uh, just awesome. I tell you, <laughs> and, and what's really interesting is all of us had a chance to get drafted in the NBA, the starting five. We all got drafted in the NBA. So that was a special team. But what was really good about that team was the depth. The depth was just as strong as the starters. They competed and fought every day in practice. So that's really what made us better. That made us game ready. So who was, who was your rival then? Who was your rival school? Was it Santa, still Santa Clara. Clara? Santa, Santa Clara. Clara. Santa Clara. We fought with Santa Clara. We had fights with Santa Clara. It was so intense because the winner automatically received a berth to go to the regionals. It was no playoff. It was that winner take all mentality. So those game, every game counted and every game was a battle. So when it came down to us in Santa Clara, that's, we had, to, we, had to do what we, had, we had to do what we had to do. We needed to beat them, not only because they're our rivals, but we needed to beat them and go to the tournament. And that was exciting. Hey, can you remember some of the better players who were in the conference? Uh that you thought were really tough? You know who was really tough? William Bird Averett. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, William Bird Averett was just unbelievable. He was unbelievable. And I mean, that was a challenge because being at USF, I always wanted to take on the best guys. I, I was the defensive guy. So when we played against teams, I would take on their best players. And I love that challenge because it goes back to growing up. I, I will score, but I don't want you to score. So I was really focused on doing everything I could do. I couldn't stop him, but control him. And then offensively put pressure on him to have to guard me. So it was that, you know, it was great. It was awesome. That was awesome times, man. And, and you know, all the guys were competitive in that 
during that time. They were very competitive because everybody wanted to win and, and everybody wanted to be the best they could be. And they wanted to make sure that they didn't lose to us. So it was competitive all through the league. You know, let me ask you a question. Was the game against, uh, because I, I, I read about it, wasn't there, uh, against Long Beach, so they're the number three team in the country. Was that the yes. biggest win that you guys had uh, yes. while you were at school? Tell, that was tell, the biggest tell me win about that game. That game was, it was really interesting because we were very, we didn't get any respect. You know, the goal was for UCLA to play Long Beach in the, in the Western Finals. And Long Beach looked at us as like, ah, you know, small, you know, they from WCC, not big deal. They, they, they were going to take care of us, right? And we felt it when we were in practice, how they looked at us and thought, you know, what, it's an easy win. Phil Smith is my roommate. And Phil and I had a conversation that night. We were talking, we were laying in bed, and I said, Phil, that's disrespectful, man. They're disrespecting us, Phil. said, I know, but we'll take care of it tomorrow. We're going to go out and we're going to be ready to play. I said, let's go. So we went out competitive, mental attitude. We went out. I had one of my best games. Phil had his best game. And we knocked off Long Beach number three in the next year. That was the best feeling in the world because we weren't supposed to. But we knew we could. You know what I mean? We knew. And that's what was important. So... Talk about your senior year, and can you tell me what lesson that you learned from USF? So if, if you were a young guy that you could pass along to them? Well, one thing that I learned is that it's a great school. I really appreciated the opportunity to go to the University of San Francisco because it, it was very diverse. You met people from all over the world. The alumni were great. Uh, that was really special to I me. Mean, they were really supportive. And at that time, the student body was unbelievable. We, we packed for Santa Clara game, the final game. We had 8,000 people in that gym. Can you imagine 8,000 people in the gym and you had people outside trying to get in? They had to call the police in to control the crowd outside because they was worried about it turning into a riot. Can you imagine as a player? <laughs> Being and seeing that, it was unbelievable, Bill. Every game packed out. Every game was packed. Everybody wanted to see us play. That was the most exciting thing you can ever have in life, man, at a college level at USF. I was, that's what was exciting to me. The other thing was the coaching staff was awesome. I had great coaching staff. You had Bill Belomini. You had Bob Gaylor. And they were, they were both very supportive to me. Uh, but the people, the players that I played with was awesome, Bill. I mean, those guys are guys I will never forget. You know, I've lost a couple, Phil Smith and Kevin Rastani. And that's been very difficult because, you know, those are guys that, that fought with you in the trenches and battled to get the number one goal was to be a champion. And so, you know, it's those special, special relationships that I've never forgotten from all over. All these guys came from all over uh, the East Bay. And it's just great relationship. But uh, the one thing about USF and I'll tell people is that it's a school that's very diverse and it's going to talk about others, doing for others. And that's special to me because that's what I, I believe in doing, doing for others and helping other people out as well. So you're leaving school now. So tell me, and you do get drafted. So tell yes. me what you're thinking at that point well, in time. Number one is I didn't think about getting drafted. I never thought about playing basketball to get drafted. My mother instilled in me to get an education. My, my whole thing was get a degree. I majored in business administration. She said, get, your, get, your, get a degree so when you go out in the world, you'll be able to get a good job. I never thought about NBA. I just wanted to, I love playing basketball and wanted to be the best. I got a call from Bob Gaylor. I wasn't even thinking about the NBA draft. I got a call from Bob Gaylord. Phil Smith was with Bob in the office. And he said, you got drafted, you got drafted by the Kansas City Kings. And I'm like, who, what? I'm like, really? He said, yeah. He said, and I called and I talked to Bob Cousy and they're really interested in you. I mean, they're serious about you. I'm like, what, really? I didn't have a clue. 
Then I got, and then Phil Smith called me. He talk, he was talking to me as well. He said, yeah, Mike, I talked to, I'm here with Galen. They really want you. They're interested. And Casey Jones, I think, was coaching the St. Louis Spirits of the ABA. And he drafted me. So I had a chance to go to the ABA or the NBA. I didn't build, it was shocking. I'm like, you know, but that's what happens when you go and give your best. You know what I mean? You say, hey, I'm, if I'm going to do something, I want to be the best. And that was instilled in me by my, my mother and my father. It's whatever you do, be the best at it. So that's the attitude that I take no matter what I do. So you did play basketball after USF. So what did you do? What I did was I played, I played a little semi-pro basketball after things didn't work out with the Kings because I didn't feel comfortable because I just, it was different. I'll just say that it was different. And I was comfortable with coming back and getting a job if that was what I needed to do. I was comfortable with that. So what I did was I worked for a cigarette company, which I didn't smoke. And I worked for them for a short time. And I felt like, no, this is not working. And I left Philip Morris and I decided to continue to keep playing. And the, the uh, European Professional Basketball Association, Association came along. And I had a chance to go down to LA and compete with thousands of kids, young men. And I, I was out of two people out of that whole group, myself and another player, we got selected. And I went to Brussels, Belgium and played with uh, Joe Ellis. <laughs> he happened to be there. And John Valley was the coach. He had played at UCLA and I think he had played with the Atlanta Hawks. And then we had guys from, some of the guys that were from the NBA that were not playing, that wanted to go to Europe. And some first round draft choices, they, want, they chose to go to Europe. So. We did that for a year and we were planning to go back, but they canceled, they canceled the, the league. So at that point I said, I got a couple of trials. I got a couple of trials with Portland when Bill Walton was there and Seattle when, when Bill Russell, but you know what, last one cut, but that was okay. At that point I decided to get a job and I started working for a snack food company here in the East Bay, which was a, chip company, potato chip company. And I did work for them for about eight years. And then I moved to Sacramento and started working for Keebler company, which was a cookie cracker company, ended up getting promotions and market manager, operations manager. And I did that for a long time. And then I decided I missed basketball. And what did I want to do is I wanted to go back to USF. So I went back to USF and Spent time with Jesse Evans as a volunteer coach for about three years. And eventually I got a chance to be an assistant coach for one year. And then they made a, they made a change in the middle of the season, let him go and they brought in Eddie Sutton. So I had a chance to work with Eddie Sutton for half a season. And then Rex came in and made changes. So the basketball career was over and that was okay because it was a great time to be at USF. I, I really loved it, being with the players and the uh, working with with the teachers and administration. I mean, it was awesome. Just it's like being at home. So what I decided to do after that is I just my nephew called me up and said he wanted to coach at Alameda High School, and he wanted me to come with him because he wanted that experience. So I decided to go with him. And after four years, we went to state and we played against Shaquille O'Neal sign in the state championship in Sacramento. Wow. <laughs> Lost by five, should have won because we, we, we were terrible shooting free throws and we had been great all season long. And I think the being in that NBA environment, you know, seeing where the players play, the kids became a little overwhelmed with, with the location, but that's okay. But they learn from it because they know that we talk about you, making free throws, make you or break you. And we worked on it all season long. You know that, that's, that's something we talk about all the time. And they know it and they admit it, they didn't do well at the free throw line, but they played great. I was very proud of those kids and I'm very proud of them because four or five of those kids went to different colleges 
And that was the main thing is we wanted to develop these kids so that they'd have a future if they wanted to in basketball to take it further. What I thought was very interesting that some people develop a winning mindset later in life. And you had one earlier. You mentioned that you had it in high school. Your parents instilled it. And some people never get that mindset, you know. And But could you explain how your desire to do the best you possibly can with everything manifests itself and what you're doing now? Well, I think, Steve, what happened was when we were growing up in my family, we came, I came from Little Rock, Arkansas, from the South. And, you know, things were a little bit different there. So when we had a chance to, to come to California, we just felt there was an opportunity that you could do anything where you, there was no restrictions, but it, it had to be you making it happen. You couldn't count on someone else to help you be successful in life. You should be able to take that, take that opportunity and, and go after it. So my parents always instilled that in me, that whatever you do, just be the best. Give it your best. My father used to tease with me all the time. He said, when you sweep, the, when you sweep at home, be the best at sweeping. If, you, if you're a street sweeper, be the best at it. So that was instilled in me all the time, thinking about if, I'm a, if you're going to do something, why not give it your all? Just give it your all and see what the results will be. And that's one of the things that I, I took that with me everywhere that I went, that I would go and say, yeah, I'm gonna be the best. It, what, no matter what the situation is, I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna make a difference. And when I leave here, I'm gonna make it better than what it was when I got here. So that was my plan. Wherever, if I go, where, whatever I did, when I left, it has to be, I made it better than it was when I got here. And that's what I felt I needed to do. And I saw the results and it motivated me to say, to keep doing it. Well, how do you get other people to do it? You and Bill, both coaches, but how do you get kids to reach their potential? You know, what's the best way to reach people? And I guess all people are different, right? Yes. And that's what's fun about coaching because it's everybody's different. You know, so you have to come with a different attitude that's for that individual. It's not just a blanket statement. So you really have to know the kid. You have to know what's, what's going on with that kid for me to find out what I need to do to reach him to help him be great. Find out what he likes, what he wants to do. What it is, and then trust is number one. They have to trust you. One of the things that kids do is they go online and they will come back and tell me, <laughs> about myself. Oh, I read this about you, coach. <laughs> oh, you got drafted, coach. So that's another thing is that they will go and do research on you. But what they needed to understand is that they come number one with me. We talk about family with our teams. I'm a, you're my family member. When you leave here, you're still like my son. And I take care of them like they're my own. And when they see you really care and love them and want to be the best you can be for them, then they'll, they'll run through a brick wall for you. But you gotta show them that you're real and that you're concerned and you, you love them. And that's, that's what we do. That's what I do. I do it with my teammates. I did it with my teammates. I let them know I love them. It wasn't selfish. It's a team I would sacrifice to get the W. And I tell my kids the same thing. Sometimes you have to sacrifice to get the bigger, the bigger, get to the bigger picture. You got to sacrifice some things, but stay as a team. You're not the first person that we've had on, you know, from USF who talks about what, why USF was so unique, but can you give me an example? You've been at other places. What are some of the things that USF does to really engender an environment where those values are put forward, you know, about caring for others and putting others above yourself? You, to be honest, I haven't been around a lot of places that I felt that. Um, and I think that's why I'm so passionate about making sure whatever I do, that I make that difference, what I learned from USF, being a part of USF, from my family, from my parents. Um, some situations that I've gone to were really difficult because I didn't think that people really felt that way because some corporations didn't feel that way. And 
I, I learned that that's what I wanted to do is that if I had opportunity to run an organization, I wanted to make sure people wanted to be there. People know, would know that I want them to be successful and great. I want you to be promoted. I want you to be great. I don't want you to just stay underneath me. I want you to excel. And I think that's what I do with kids and with friends and with people that I know is I want you to be great. <laughs> and that's a motivation to me and they see that in me and that's what drives them, I think. Well, Mike, thank you so much. Uh, for this time. You know, I've always really appreciated our time together. Um, you give me such great insight. I mean, I, I get so much insight from you uh, because you're you're a perfect example of USF, of, of, of caring, of, of team first, uh, of valuing everybody and, and what they do. And I've always uh, enjoyed our time together. Thank you, Bill. I really do appreciate that because, you know, you and I do have a special relationship because we can talk about anything and we're so <laughs> connected. <laughs> but yes, um, it's been great talking with you guys. Great talking with you too, Steve. Thank you very much, Mike. I appreciate it. Really great getting to know you and hope to see you soon. Thank you. I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you very much. Okay, go Dons. <laughs>